My dream will not be fulfilled until wine consumption in the country is at least 5% of Alcobev. Sula is arguably the most visited vineyard in the world. We don't need Sula on the label of each and every one of the wines we make. We would love to see more wineries stepping up. Hi, we are at Sula Vineyards and I'm with the man who everybody knows, Rajiv Saman founder of Sula Vineyards, the undisputed leader of the Indian wine industry and a company that recently went public. Rajiv, congratulations on the great success of the IPO. Thank was, you, Sonal. I was looking at the quarter three results of Sula and you've continued to show great steady volume growth, particularly in wines above the 700 price point mark. So what are your thoughts on the premiumization of the Indian wines? So that's always been our focus. Um, is more premium wines you know you can obviously you can give a, a superior product to consumers today indian wine drinkers are becoming more and more discerning they are demanding mm. you know a wine as good as anything that you're going to get coming out of france or, or italy or argentina so sula has stepped up to that and we aim to dominate the market above 700 rupees below especially below 500 rupees we're just not so interested it's a very crowded field there's a lot of wineries you know crushing a lot of table grapes and making cheaper wines with a lot of discounting that's not sula's job sula's job is to make really nice wines above 700 even 1200 1500 our source range our rasa range which consumers are really loving that's where our road ahead is. Super, I think that's a win-win for everybody because I think consumers also want better quality wines going forward. So, it's all very good but according to you, what are the three greatest challenges that lie ahead for the Indian wine industry? So, the first thing is very much just popularizing wine as, you know, a, a great alternative to spirits. Mm. Um, you know, India has always been a very spirits-driven country that continues even to today. So even though wine is making great strides and you know, I'm happy to say that wine is growing much faster than spirits or beer, it's still tiny. Yes. So I think that for me, my dream will not be fulfilled until wine consumption in the country is at least 5% of Alcobev. And considering we are less than 1% today, that's, uh, you know, that, that we have our work uh, cut out for us. The other thing is um, the law of the land, the laws of the land, states, you know, um, Alcobev is a, is a very uh, important category in terms of revenue for the states. Yes. So anytime the states are hurting in terms of revenue, anytime there's a downturn, there's COVID, for example, um, you know, they try to extract more from Alcobev. So that is difficult and that is uh, linked to price control. So you have various states where you have price controls. Um, but having said that, you know, even with these challenges, we are growing nicely, robustly. There's more and more Indians drinking more and more well-made Indian wine, more and more Sula, more and more Rasa every day. So I think there's more opportunities than challenges. I like that. I like the positive spirit there. You touched upon the fact that you wanted the wine category to be at least 5% of the overall Alcobev market. But the truth, Rajiv, is that you have the lion's share, over 52% of the market share as a single player, Sula does. And over 60% of the premium market. 52% you're talking about including the cheaper wines. But once you start going up the price ladder, right. Sula's market share starts to grow and grow. And that's incredible. But the flip side of that, the concern is, are you concerned that no other Indian winemaker is really helping expand the market and all eggs in one bite? It's too much, too much responsibility to shoulder, no, singularly? We would love to see more wineries stepping up. You know, this is something we look, look at what we've created here. You know, I founded a wine region, Nasik, and uh, Moethe Shandon came down here and put up their winery today. You have Shandon wine being made yeah. in Nasik. So I just wonder why you have not had that kind of um, interest from, you know, deep pocketed, you know, what's happened in Napa? How did Napa grow? Yeah. You had people with deep pockets from other industries, from tech, from real estate, then saying, okay, we want to put up a nice vineyard, a boutique vineyard, make some lovely wines and enjoy the vineyard life. That hasn't yet really taken off and it's something we look forward to. Fantastic. You touched upon the wine life, uh, what Napa has done, which is globally the undisputed leader in the wine tourism. Absolutely. I've been coming to Sula over the last decade uh, and every time I've been here, there's been a renewed freshness, something new, something shinier, something always constantly being upgraded at your tourism facility. It's very clear, Rajiv, evident that you have made tremendous and significant investment in wine tourism here. So tell us your thoughts on what do you think that does in terms of growing the Sula brand overall? 
Yeah, you've really touched on something. We always like to keep it fresh. So if you come and you come again a year later, you're always going to find something a little different here, a little bit of an upgrade. So we are always working on that and you know, it keeps us really busy. Uh, we've been delighted with how wine tourism has grown over the last decade. I mean, today, um, as you're fully aware, Sula is arguably the most visited vineyard in the world. We're still always researching for, is there another vineyard which gets more visitors than us? We are yet to find it. Yeah. So I can, you know, Have make... Have you applied to the Guinness Book of World Records yet for that one? No, and we haven't. So, Karan, we need to do that. Yeah, we should, should do that. To the we Book should. Of World Records to be the, the we should. Visited winery in the world, and you know. Yeah, we would have definitely been in the Limca Book of Indian Records, but yeah. now that doesn't exist anymore. Yeah. But sure, now we'll go for the Guinness we Book that. as well. We I think so, it'll be a great moment of you know, pride for Indian wine industry. Together. Yeah. So, in terms of visitor numbers, look, it just keeps going up and up. You know, we've been adding more rooms. People love the wine experience when they stay here. You know, you have a wine fridge with all the wines available to you for drink you know everything here is at MRP it's like yeah. a fabulous uh, you have so many different places restaurants tasting room amphitheater where you can enjoy the wine experience um, and the other really exciting thing is the air connectivity of Nasik so just in the last couple of years the Nasik airport and the Shirdi airport so you now have flights from Delhi yeah. Bangalore Hyderabad I mean these are big yeah. you know metros where you now have flights coming in and so that's really giving us a big boost we're starting to see visitors at the source who've just flown in from delhi they go to shirdi they come to nasik Correct. they come to sula so that's really going to take things to another level and you talk about some of these cities and and the fact that you know flight air connectivity but also sula is such a epicenter for people of all socio-economic strata to come here at the tasting room every time i'm at the tasting room i see the people across all walks of life, across socio-economic strata, enjoying wine equally. It's a very inclusive sort of a culture, which is great. But also, what do you think about the next level of growth coming from tier two cities? I think you said that, you mentioned that in the media a couple of months ago. And have we done enough in tier one, for that matter? So I want to first talk about the fact that you have people from all walks of life coming here to enjoy wine. That's something we're really proud of. Yeah. And that's something that's really important for us. Um, so just as you have people flying in, you also have people, a lot of our visitors are from Nasik. A lot of people who come every day, you have people who've never tasted wine before. That's incredibly important for us, for the brand, for wine consumption in general. So you know our wine tourism, though it's an incredibly profitable business and a growing business, the importance within Sula is not only for its own revenues and profitability. It's also for the fact that this is the place where more people taste their first glass of wine than any other spot on earth. So true. that's really important. You come here, you understand what you like, you start to appreciate wine, and then you're going to go back to wherever you're from, and you're going to order more wine, you're going to buy more wine. So that's what makes this, this so is, important. This is so true, Rajiv. You really touched upon the ultimate truth, which is 9 out of 10 Indians have tried their first glass of wine, and it was a Sula. What do you feel about countries like Australia signing FTAs with India and many other countries to follow suit uh, that will make their wines cheaper, imported wines cheaper, more approachable. How do you see the future panning out and how do you think that's going to impact Sula? Look, that was overdue. Yeah. That was long overdue. You know, we have enjoyed, um, you know, this, this market, this incredible market to ourselves for the longest time. And I think that the approach of the governments, of our own Indian government, has, has been very smart and makes sense that you're bringing down the duties appreciably on more expensive imported wine. And I think that that makes sense because we have to remember, Sonal, that here wine is a fledgling industry yes. just coming up. It's, yeah. a, it's, it's very important for farmers. Today, you don't have a lot of bright spots for Indian agriculture. Indian wine is one of them. So you need to have some amount of protection from the cheaper wines. And you know, you have places, Australia, etc. Yeah. You really have, uh, farmers are struggling, like grape prices yeah. have just completely crashed. And if you have, and there's a lot of support from their governments to the industry in Europe, if you see in France, the kind of support that the grape growers get, it's yeah. massive. We don't get any of that kind of support. No. So we do need, I'll say it straight, some modicum of pro uh, protection from lower price, really cheap imports. But at the higher end, I think it's a great thing. Yep. I think that Indians are going to be um, introduced to, to so many beautiful wines from all these places. 100%. I myself love 
uh, you know, more expensive Australian wines, French wines. You know, I know there's a, an FTA being, uh, you know, worked on with, EU with the EU right UK, now. So US. you're going to have you're going to yeah, have Champagne. Exactly. You're going to have you know Bordeaux and Burgundy, Grand Cru's coming in at a much reduced price. I love it. I have no problem with that. Yeah. I think that it's a it's a nice balanced approach that's happening Lovely. in these FTAs. Lovely. Good times ahead. So I'm going to ask you, what is more difficult, making good quality wine in India or actually selling wine? Because making wine is one thing, selling it is another. And Rajiv, you've exceedingly succeeded at both. But what is, where's the real struggle? Neither of those is easy. Sure. But I must say that today, you know, we've got our winemaker Karan Vasani just, yeah. just standing over here. And I would, I want to say proudly that, um, you know, our wine quality is just going up and up and up. And today we've reached a level where, you know, you could say you can have a bottle of Sula, Rasa, Sauce, Dindori, above 700, above 1000 bucks. You're always going to be delighted with the result. And when you compare it to another wine from another country, even on a shelf in London, you're going to find that our quality is second to none. In terms of selling it, the kinds of barriers that I talked about, the, the state-wise regulation, the label registration fees, the, the incredible bureaucracy that we face with state excise departments, I think this is the harder point than actually making better and better wine here. And we're figuring out the climate, we're figuring out our soils today. We have so many th uh, things that we've been doing to mitigate climate uh, change, etc. So we're really dealing with it. I mean, we've had three amazing harvests in a row, 2023 looking beautiful, Lots of um, lots of rain in the monsoon. Now sunny in the growing season. Fantastic uh, harvest in terms of quality and quantity. Third fantastic harvest in a row. The quality of Sula wines is continually improving, and I think most of the trade acknowledges that. Uh, but the elite people of South Mumbai and some pockets of such similar pockets of India, for some reason, love to hate Sula. Why do you think that is and what do you have to say to them? I'm not it's sure like, that I agree with you, but I would say that a lot of people who grew up drinking Sula, mm. a, a lot, some of those, especially in the uh, you know, elite enclaves of, of South Bombay, etc., have moved on maybe to imports and that's, that's a very natural progression. We have no issues with that. However, I would like to say that with our Rasa and our source labels, we have gained back a lot of consumers. Today, our source Grenache Rosé is widely acknowledged as the best rosé wine that you can buy in India for below 3,000 rupees a bottle. It's also a wine that is continually scooped awards at the India Wine Awards year after year. There you go. We, so, we've really acknowledged you know, that. so we've learned that perhaps we don't want, don't need Sula on the label of each and every one of the wines we make. That at the higher end, you know, you have Toyota and you have Lexus. Right. I mean, you have you have many sure. uh, examples. You have Volkswagen is an owner of uh, Porsche. Sure. So you, you don't have to brand all your wines with your mother brand. You know, you can have differentiation and that really works well for us. So you will find today more and more bottles of our Rasa Cabernet Sauvignon, which I think is a fantastic Cabernet Sauvignon or the Sauce Grenache Rosé being opened in exactly those homes in exclusive South mm. Bombay. Nice. I'm glad I asked you that question because it's a, it's a question everyone sort of circumvents around, but I think for a lot of people, they might have tried Sula maybe 10 years ago, haven't since, but it's kind of, you know, sometimes you're kind of stuck with some, and someone has to bash someone, you know, it's a, it's, it's a bit of a snobby affair as well. I want to say one thing also, Please. you know, another real success story that we've had in the last five years is our Dindori Chardonnay. So look, at the end of the day, Sula has never made a Chardonnay and a lot of people say, I drink Chardonnay, right? So that's one place where we've, we didn't know if we could make a decent Chardonnay here. What do you know? It grows really nicely in Nasik. Um, next thing you know, wow, this wine is getting better and better. So these are the kinds of things we are doing where we are grabbing consumers back. Today, our Dindori Chardonnay at 1200 rupee a bottle is a fantastic Chardonnay at that price. So. That's another real success. We just tried success. the 2023 vintage out of uh, tanks yesterday and I have to say it's come out really good and Dindori Chardonnay is also among one of my very, very enjoyable Indian wines. So it's definitely a great success story to know that India can make a good quality Chardonnay, a really enjoyable one. Of sure. You know, and I want to put something else in perspective. You talk about wine, you talk about a fact that a lot of people you know have moved on to imports. Sure. Talk about spirits. Mm. Today, Indian whiskey is the biggest selling whiskey in the world. Yes. You know, and it's a, a huge market. But you have enough people who will only drink imported spirits. Of course. But there's enough space in the market for everyone. Everyone. You talk about beer. 
there are people who only used to drink Kingfisher beer and now they're drinking other things, but Kingfisher still grows, goes strong. Yeah. So I would not say that, uh, you know, we have anything to be worried about. We're always going to have those people who move on, want to try other things. Wine drinkers at the end of the day, they are adventurous. Wouldn't you say? They are not necessarily brand loyal. They want to try different things all the time. And we have enough newbie wine drinkers coming on stream, you can say, in India yeah. to take care of our runway for decades to come. What are your thoughts about Gen Z coming into the drinking fold? What are some of the your feeling about this population? Do you think they're going to take more to wine in a big way? Uh, what What is your research or your discussion? You know, I think that a lot of them will, but we can't take it for granted. So, for instance, one of the projects that we've been doing recently is Wine in a Can. So, we launched our Dia Wine, which is a big hit with Gen Z actually, in a can, and that's been a big success. So you're going to see more wines in a can from us. And I think that Gen Z right now, Rosé and Bubbles is where it's at. So that needs to be also where the action is at. Amazing. I'm going to ask you one last question, Rajiv. Everyone looks up to you as a leader. Uh, very few have access to you. Everyone knows that. Uh, but they all want to learn from you. They all look up to you. They, they love your success story. We're all inspired by it. What are the three main pieces of advice you want to give I don't want to call them competition, but you know, your, your colleagues in the Indian wine industry who are making wine and are perhaps not succeeding as much as you are. So one of the big wine. advice I would give is get away from discounting. And you know, a lot of wine guys coming in, they want to, be, they want to get big immediately, overnight. It's like, you know, you just started your first restaurant and you're already talking to your investors about 10 restaurants. I mean, make your first restaurant successful first. In the same way, start small and make that successful. The problem that we do have in our industry is this huge um, worship of the Lord Bogo. Do you know who the Lord Bogo is? Yeah. Buy Bogo, one, get one. buy one, get one. You know, and Lord Bogo is the, the, the dominant deity of uh, of Indian wine and that's what I would like to say to others yeah. is please stop worshipping Lord Bogo. Stand up, make the brand stand up on its own feet. There is enough scope. Try to look maybe, Sula has always done things first, a lot of things. Yes. Why don't you look for an, um, uh, a variety that we haven't done? Maybe you want to look at growing Pinot Grigio. We don't, Sula doesn't make a Pinot Grigio these days. Why don't you look at trying to grow Pinot Grigio and make the only Pinot Grigio in the market? For example, yeah. why do you have to follow always our road because there you know we are so dominant it makes it difficult, difficult. so stay away from really cheap wines don't give don't, uh, don't copy buy time. one get one try to do something Create unique and different it's not that difficult if you put your mind to it and that's those are a few of the pieces of advice i would have rajiv thank you so much we are so thrilled with the continued success of sula and as i said it's always a pleasure to be here always a pleasure to see you thank you thank you so much yeah cheers. absolutely cheers, cheers.